Uh, there's also a differential treatment not only between um, sort of slaves and non-slaves here, but as you've mentioned before, different kinds of slaves. We seem yeah. to have chattel slavery versus indentured servitude, but also we seem to have differential treatment for Israelites versus foreigners uh, in the book of Leviticus, a verse that you referenced earlier, but I'll I'll read out uh, again from the NIV, uh, Leviticus 25 verses 44 to 46. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can bequeath them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. So I think it's worth bearing in mind. I mean, here it, it, it seems clear that what we're saying is there's a totally different rule for Israelites than there are for, for others. And I think it's worth bearing in mind that when you see a verse that seems to suggest that we're not talking about a particularly grotesque form of slavery, we have to be careful to understand, are we talking about all slaves here? Or are we talking about just Israelites? Or are we talking about just indentured servitudes and not uh, servants and not those who are sort of sold into chattel slavery for life? There seems to be a lot of differential treatment here. And I think that one of the ways that we can often get a bit sort of blindsided is by people saying, look at this verse, which suggests that slaves have to be treated nicely, but we're really talking about Israelites who are, who have voluntarily entered into indentured service as opposed to slaves captured from the nations around you. Yeah. And, and this sort of thing plays out, uh, of course, Leviticus 25 is like the, the, the big passage. Um, but this sort of this sort of treatment of foreigners, uh, you can see very clearly in other passages. Um, and again, we can come back to Leviticus twenty-five and talk about as much or as little as you like of it. Uh, but in in some place, you know, places like um, Deuteronomy twenty-one, which talks about a captive bride. Here, the picture is, uh, if you read back through the previous chapter, Deuteronomy twenty ten to fourteen, it talks about what how the israelites are to go to war um and we know uh you know from this passage but also from others that all of the the nations that are living in the land of canaan in the promised land they're to be annihilated right? they're to be wiped out they are under what's called the ban however uh the question then becomes well what about other nations, because Deuteronomy sets up Israel as the head of the nations, right? And they're the ones that are supposed to be in charge. They're supposed to be the best. They're supposed to be the most powerful. They're supposed to create vassal, you know, create vassals all around them. So how do how do they do that? What is the what are the rules for warfare? And so it says when you go to war against nations or cities that are very far away from you, uh, you're to offer them. Shalom is what the text says, peace, right? And, and what that equates to is a vassal treaty, as you can, as you see in the next verses. Uh, and basically, the text uh, explains that y if they accept, if they say we're good, we'll be your vassal, then uh, the people in the city become your corvée labor, right? And you can you can muster them as you like to do, you know, building projects that so you see Solomon doing. However, if they close their gates and they say, no way, Jose, right, and they put up a fight, then you're to kill all of the men in the city, all the fighting force. And you're to take the women and the children and the livestock as plunder. And that's what you do to the cities that are around. They become your property, right? So then chapter 21 sort of in this context says, okay, if an Israelite man sees among those captives a beautiful woman and he wants to take her as a wife, here's how you do it. He brings her into his house, has a ritual where he trims her nails and shaves her head, uh, changes clothing into new clothing. And then she's given 30 days to mourn her dead family. Just pause, because <laughs> um, I shouldn't be laughing, but I I feel like I laugh sometimes at horrible statements. Well, it's it's um, difficult. It's difficult not to. I, again, from 
from the Lord's own mouth. Uh, and this is Deuteronomy 21, verse, verses 10 onwards. When you go to war against your enemies and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands and you take captives, if you notice among the captives a beautiful woman and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured. After she has lived in your house and mourned her father and mother for a full month, then you may go to be her, uh, then you may go to her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. I mean, I don't see a, a, a way of reading this that can be that can be uh, reconciled with the attitude that I often see in in popular apologetics that we're not really talking about you know slavery here. We're talking about something like people entering into a voluntary work contract. No, this is this is <laughs> captives of war yeah. who the captors find attractive. Yeah. Give them a month to mourn for the people who presumably were killed by their new husband, and now they're yours to keep. Yeah. Again, uh, the verse you mentioned earlier, just because I, I want to make sure that our listeners hear it from the Bible itself so they don't mm. think you're distorting things. Uh, earlier, the, in Leviticus 25, verses 44 onwards, you'll, uh, sorry, sorry, Deuteronomy. Uh, 20, 10 to 14, yeah. Yeah, so the, we were talking earlier about Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20, verses 10 onwards. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. Again, it seems like make them an offer of peace. That sounds like a good thing, but it says here, if they accept and open their gates, all of the people in it shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you. Some peace. If they refuse to make peace, which, you know, uh, how dare they, as they engage and they engage you in battle, lay siege to that city. When the Lord your God delivers it into your hand, put to the sword all of the men in it as for the women the children the livestock and everything else in the city you may take these as plunder for yourselves and you may use the plunder the lord your god gives you from your enemies yeah you may use the plunder and of course the plunder is referring to the livestock you know the uh the the property and of course the women and this is alex this is precisely what we see in the, the very often uh, dis- discussed passage, Numbers 31. Yes. Um, and what people miss about this is uh, the, the, the Christian apologists, that they, they, they have this way of sort of um, spinning this in a way that, uh, and it makes me sad, frankly. Um, but Numbers 31 is that these, these virgin women uh, – are are they're not only taken, but they are numbered and counted along with the other livestock in the chapter. Uh, I think it's probably down in like I can't remember seventeen and eighteen somewhere around there, but um, it might be even further down than that. But it but it it says you know such and such number of sheep and such and such number of cattle and such such number of women. Right, like it, it, and they're divided out among the tribes. So, um, this this is something that what I hear all the time that makes me ill. And I remember Mike Winger, uh, if you're familiar with him, had a discussion yeah. with Skylar Fiction um, several years ago on this particular passage, and I think it's the last time he's spoken with him. Um, and, and Mike, uh, it, it just blew my mind uh, because he's, he's saying essentially things like, well, yeah, like this is, this is a protection for the woman. If that's what you get out of that passage, um, I don't know, it, it betrays, it tips your hand, what cards you're holding, right? What your position is, um, because the scene that you're describing would be akin to if someone were to break into my house right now and were to kill me uh, and to kill Megan and to set the house on fire and to take my five children as as captives, right? And keep them in the basement 
in their house while the, this house burns down and keep them there. Um, and, and, but to feed them, right. And to clothe them and to, to, to give them homeschooling, right. And to teach them to play the violin or what, whatever else we would say would certainly no apologist would come to the defense of the, the captor, the kidnapper and say, well, I mean, it was, it was a protection for the kids to take them out of that burning building, right? This was for their benefit. Um, but what was he supposed to do? Just leave them there to die? Well, I mean, like, I, again, sick flex, bro. You know, like th- this, this isn't the flex that you think that it is. Um, this woman, uh, not that women had uh, consent, uh, you know, or gave consent in marriages. That wasn't really a thing. Um, but certainly this, this woman is, is not giving consent either directly, uh, uh, or, or even if you want to make the argument, um, that she would, would have wanted it, she would have wanted it under duress in the same way that my kids would have wanted the guy to take them instead of letting them burn alive. Um, I'm, I, and I'll be quiet, but like, I, I picture, um, that movie, uh, about, um, uh, oh my gosh, that's so terrible. The, 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 the Holocaust movie that's so famous. I can't remember the name. Um, uh, there are but a few I can, I can think of maybe Schindler's List. Schindler's the, List. That's it. And there's a, there's a scene where, uh, the women in the concentration camp are simply trying to not be shot in the morning. And so they like slap their cheeks to make them a little bit redder, you know, a little bit rosier so they don't look so gaunt and so pale. Um, And when that guy comes by that, 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 you know, officer walks by and doesn't shoot them, you know, or if, if he were to say, Hey, come with me, um, you're going to be my wife. Would they have wanted that instead of being shot by the next officer? Yeah. Hell yeah. Right. Uh, But does that mean that they consented to it? Of course not. Does that make it okay? Of course not. Um, and so the logic here, I think it just it just betrays that you're starting with your conclusion as an apologist and you're saying this has to be OK. This has to be OK. And I have to make that OK. Now, I don't know what Mike Winger in particular has said. I, I haven't listened to that debate. At least I don't think so. I am familiar with him. But but we were talking earlier generally about this uh, approach to the to the problem specifically of female slavery, that this is somehow for the benefit of the woman, that this is for their protection and like you say, this is uh, an absurdity, but it's also worth bearing in mind, um, if we look at Numbers 31, this is after the the Midianites, the armies of Moses, just uh, essentially genocide the Midianites. And Moses commands his troops, now kill all the, all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has not slept with a man. Again, that's the NIV's translation if this is about the the protection of women it seems interesting that it's only about the protection of virgin women the the women who've slept with the man they get put to the sword the ones who haven't these are the ones who are offered the protection if there is some kind of argument to, to the to the in the tone of saying this is somehow for the benefit of the women it's worth bearing in mind why it would only apply to the virgin women why do you think that might be the full conversation that the clip you just watched was taken from is available via the link that's on your screen Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.